In this video, we're going to go over on the Work Center 302 our uh, GABS adaptive guide bushing. So, depending on your experience uh, with Swiss and Citizen, uh, this is the new JBS adaptive on what it looks like on the front. Looks pretty comparable to a standard uh, guide bushing assembly or housing. Uh, the back side, uh, main spindle's in the way. The back side looks a little bit different. Uh, the biggest thing is the main spindle doesn't go up into the uh, housing as far as the normal guide bushing, but that's just part of the manufacture. So, I'm gonna go over some general rules on this and just a general overview uh, so everyone know, understands what's going on. Um, the whole point to this system is that it flexes um, I gotta call it here. It flexes to uh, the stock. So you can see I can move it around. So this is supposed to have up to 12 thousandths worth of flex. So the main point for this is to not have to get ground material. So running uh, cold finish material in a standard guide bushing uh, the stock size, if it varies at all, you're always adjusting the guide bushing, uh, nut, and all that. This assembly is controlled by air, so that's what controls the pressure on this collet, and it allows it to kind of, you know, flex back and forth and all that fun stuff. So, I have a few rules printed off. On this sheet here, um, down at the bottom here, uh, adaptive guide bushing. I got three rules for sure. Um, do not turn glide or clamp on without material in the collet. So every time that a person closes this, because this does open and close, uh, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. We want to make sure that material is pushed through there before you clamp onto it. So it doesn't uh, mess that collet up at all. Second rule is to make sure to turn glide and clamp off before pu pulling material out. So our bar loader change program has that in there already. But if you ever manually pull the material out, make sure to open that up before you pull the material out. So it doesn't collapse on it. That's kind of no different than not turning it on without material in there. Same concept. And then the third, probably the biggest one is when the machine powers down, the collet glide and clamp will open. You must command an M430 and MDI to close before you start cutting any material. So refer to our power up video. We want to make sure to close that glide before we do a cutoff start position upon start startup. I do have a little sticker here right by the start button to try to remind everyone to. Um, and then here are the four M codes for this. This is both a glide and a clamp system. So glide on is M430, glide off is M431, clamp on is M432, clamp off is M433. So those are pretty self-explanatory. Glide means that the material is going to glide in and out of that collet. Clamp means it's going to actually clamp down on the material. So you cannot jog the material back and forth. So that's the two operations this guide bushing will do. So with that said, right now the glide is on, the collet's closed, all that fun stuff. The reason why that is is because I just stopped production 
and did a gank plate retract. Every program is going to have the correct M codes in it, so you don't have to worry about the programs at all. It's just if you're ever doing anything manually, pulling material out, putting material in, starting up the machine are all when these M codes you're going to have to command. So, what I'm going to do is close this all up and go through this. So, we're in MDI. I have M430 typed in there. Right now the glide's on, so I'm going to do a M431, which is glide off. So now I'm going to run that. I don't know if you'll be able to see it through the glass or not, but you can see it popped out. So now, when you look in there, you can actually see a small little step right here. That means that that thing's loose. So right now, I can wiggle there's a little gap in between the collet and the material. Now I can wiggle that a little bit. The video's probably not going to pick it up, but right now there's about a 10 to 15 thou gap in there. So this is what it's going to look like upon power up too. So that is glide open and clamp open. This is in the open state. Right now I'll show you the back side where the air regulators are. So the back side of the machine right here is where we control the air pressure for how much tension is on the guide bushing collet. <laughs> so with that said I have these labeled. This regulator uh, controls the glide this regulator controls the clamp. A general rule of thumb, and this should all be done upon setup and shouldn't have to get adjusted, but generally we're going to be somewhere in between 1 and 3 bar for the glide. The clamp, we probably won't use that often, so I'm not going to go too much into depth on that. Uh, it's mainly always going to be the glide. Uh, and stuff, but once the machine's set up, in theory, uh, we should not have to adjust this. So, right now I actually have it locked. The way I have it locked is with this blue bar, and it's pushed down. So you can see when it's up, by turning the knob, it moves the pressure. Counterclockwise to lessen the pressure, clockwise to go up with it. So this, this part we're at two bar, and then I'm going to lock that. So in order to lock it, you gotta push down, and you'll hear it kind of click and snap into place, and then push this blue bar over now this doesn't pop up at all and you cannot turn it. So now that is locked into place. And it's the same way over here on the clamp. There's also these prox switches or valves uh, switches that light up too. So right now this little valve here or switch is for the glide. This one's for the clamp. So when we turn glide on, this one will light up. When clamp's on, this one will light up. So I'll show you that here now. So we're gonna go into MDI, M430 for the glide on. That's going to suck that Pull it back into 
where it was in the beginning of the video. Right there. We saw it move. And another indication I look at too is that now this is flush. There's no little step there. So that collet edge is flush with the, the housing. So then when we go back here, right now our glide's on and I can tell because there's a light lit up right here. But the clamp light is not lit up. So we go back. And you shouldn't ever have to manually clamp it. It's always you're going to manually turn on the glide. But I just want to show you that light. So M432. We're going to run that. And now you can see that light is on, that light is on. So the only way the clamp works, and again, this is always going to be just in the program, you're never going to do this manually, is the glide has to be on in order for the clamp to turn on too. So now I'm just going to do an M433. That's going to turn the clamp off, but still leave the glide on. So as you can see, whoop, that's still flush. It hasn't moved. But our clamp is off because that light is off. That light's on, so the glide is still on. It's a pretty straightforward system. It's gonna take a little bit of getting used to for everyone, adapting to it uh, and stuff like that compared to a normal guide bushing. But overall, it should get us away from having to worry about adjusting the guide bushing for the variant stock. So, that's all I got in this video. Just please follow the three main rules on this sheet. And again, that's always hanging up here. Follow those rules. Again, there's going to be a short little video on this in the power-up because we have to command that M430 upon power-up. Because like I said, when we power this machine down, that call it is going to pop out and there's going to be a little step in there like I showed you earlier.